think Mina has it right. You have to... You have to squish it. You have to put it on your face. This is like imprinting. This I'm imprinting on the yarn. Or it's imprinting on me. Either way. I love it. Love it. <laughs> so many different ways to wear. Welcome to the Brownberry Chronicles podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, crochet, drawing, painting, um, just about creative adventures. And I am Mars, um, otherwise known as Hey Brownberry on Instagram and Twitter, or Brownberry on Ravelry. Welcome to the podcast. If you're a subscribed viewer or a returning visitor, welcome back. Thank you so much for being with uh, with me. And if you're new to the podcast and this is your first episode, welcome. Thanks for joining me. I use this podcast as a way to balance out a somewhat crazy uh, work life. And it's an outlet to talk about making and creating and enjoying all things involved in that, um, in that part of life. So I hope you enjoy this podcast. I thank you for being with me. I'm going to cover a few things in the podcast today. I have a few segments. Um, I'm going to show you some things that are on my needles in my um, knitting works in progress. I'll show you some things that are recently off my needles, um, some finished objects, and I'm going to talk about some of the knit-alongs that I'm currently involved in um, by way of Instagram and Ravelry, and I also want to share some um, things from the mailbag. So there'll be a segment on things that I've received in the mail recently that have made me very happy. Thanks again for being here. Let's get right into it. So I wanted to start, as I said, with some of the things that are currently on my needles. These are my works in progress that I have been um, stitching away on recently. So some knitting that I would love to share with you. If you've watched the podcast before, you've seen that I've recently gotten back into knitting socks. So currently on my needles is another sock project. Um, I am really loving working with this yarn. And I have to do my works in progress sock pose. This is Patton's Croy yarn. I'm making a pair of socks from the top down. So for the first time in a long while, I've started from the cuff and I'm knitting the socks down to the toe. My typical knitting method is from the toe up because I really love that method of being able to use up all the yarn and use a full skein so that I get longer socks. I prefer them longer, but this time I'm going top down. This Patton's Croy yarn has been such a great, um, not so new discovery. It's a yarn I've known about for a long time, but I've started recently using it a lot. This will be, I think my third um, skein of yarn. I have another pair that I'll show you in finished objects, but this is a color I am in love with, and it's a self-striping yarn. Um, they're not all self-striping. Some of them are variegated, but this colorway, which is Blue Striped Rag, R-A-G-G, -G, is a self-striping. So just let you behold that color. I 
love it. I love how it's knitting up. I'm actually not at all concerned that my stripes don't match in these socks. It's not something that I get, um, that I really care about. I have decided that I'm going to do a little bit of a pattern this time. My last pair of socks was just a straight stockinette, you know, sort of a vanilla sock. This time I'm doing up some patterning, which is a baby cable rib. And it's a very simple um, four row pattern. Really three of the rows are the same and the fourth row you just do a slight cable twist. It's a really cool way to add a little texture and I'm gonna get a lot of stretch out of these. My last pair of socks, if you saw in a previous episode, were knitted for me but didn't fit me. So they went to my husband and lucky him, he got a pair of socks he wasn't expecting. These are for me, so I made sure that I used a pattern that had some stretch to it. I do like my socks to be snug, so I'm really enjoying knitting these. I really, I can't stop like squishing this yarn. I really love the feel of it. It's so um, sturdy as well. It's not scratchy. The content of the yarn um, is, it is, I think it's a 75-25, yes. So it's 75% washable wool, 25% nylon, so that means I can machine wash and dry it, which I have done. I've tried that and it works really well. And this happens to be the Patton's Croy Socks um, brand. So in each ball, it's a 50 gram ball, and each ball gives you about 166 yards. And in my previous sock pairs, I found that one ball per sock for a longer sock works really well. If you like your socks shorter, you'll have a good amount left over if you get two balls of this for a pair. So I'm really enjoying working these. I'll talk a little bit more about um, a knit along that these will be part of where I'm going to be working on a special kind of heel. I don't have a lot of experience with different types of heels on socks. I have done short row heels. Um, most often I do a gusset with a slip stitch heel flap and I'll show you an example of that. That's probably been the most common. So I'm trying to branch out in my sock knitting. Since I have returned to knitting after a few years of not doing it at all, I am finding so much joy in trying new yarns, new colors, new stitching techniques, and new types of projects. If you look me up on Ravelry, at uh, my username is Brownberry, you'll see that I knit a lot of hats and cowls and shawls. Um, so I'm also branching out in the types of projects that I'm working on. I used to knit a lot of socks and I'm returning to that. So if you um, like this yarn, it's readily available at Michael's Craft Store. That's where I tend to get it. And I think you can also get it online pretty easily. So that's a pair of socks on the needles. Um, also on my needles, another object that's going to be, that is part of a knit along is my three color cashmere shawl. This is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. It's a shawl pattern that has just a little bit of um, design, lace design within the shawl by way of some strategically placed yarn overs. And then it's meant, well, it was originally shown in the design as a three color shawl. So right now I've got two of those colors going. And there will be a third color that I will add. I don't have it near me, but it's going to be a bright pink that I'm going to add. I've shown those colors on Instagram, and uh, I believe you can see it in my project page on Ravelry. I'm really enjoying this knit. Um, you can't see the whole thing spread out. It's a little bit bunched up on my Knit Picks uh, wooden needles. But... There are a lot of stitches on here already. I'm into the 200s, um, maybe 217 or so, something like that. Um, so the rows are getting long, but I don't mind. It's primarily some stockinette with a little bit of design interest in it. So it's just enough to keep me, um, to keep me going each row. And then it's done in these color bands. So getting from one band to the other is also very exciting. Getting to switch colors is something you kind of work your way toward that you want to get to the next colors uh the next stripe so it's it's keeping my interest for sure i, I really this is a knit where i really can't wait um it's going to be this way i can't really wait to wear it i'm really excited to have it on and have uh, a reason to wear it it might be 
uh, that I have to wait until the fall um, because I live in Florida and it's already starting to get pretty warm here. It's spring, so we do have some cool days and there are some rainy days that cool it down, but for a shawl that would be of the size that this is going to be, I may not get to wear it here very much. Um, I may get to wear it during an event that I'm going to in May, which I'll also talk about in a little bit later in the podcast as part of my knit-along discussion. So this is my three-color cashmere shawl, work in progress. The yarns are Knit Picks Gloss Fingering Weight in the Kenai colorway. Love this color. I really should get some more of it. Um, great yarn. It's a, it's a very sturdy yarn. I'll post a link to it in the show notes. And this is just another one of the Knit Picks products that I'm in love with. They have some great yarns to work with. The other yarn that you see, the black yarn, is actually a four-ply... Um, wool yarn and I don't know the name of this yarn I got it in a swap on a big cone thousands and thousands of yards I think I started out with uh, more than 6,000 yards of this yarn but it's fairly thin so in this shawl I'm actually doubling it in order to get a similar gauge now this shawl is another one that has um really kind of helped me branch out in the way that I knit. I'm trying to pay attention to my gauge. I'm trying to knit according to the kind of fabric that I want to have in the finished object. So for this shawl, I'm actually having to knit with two different sets of needles. And that's because the Knit Picks Gloss I'm carrying just as a single strand, and that requires a smaller needle. But the black wool yarn is double-stranded in the shawl. And so in order to keep the gauge similar to the gauge of my Knit Picks yarn, I have to switch needles each time I move to the black, which is not that bad because you end up knitting a good number of rows for each band. So you're working with the same needle for a period of time before you have to switch. And, you know, with interchangeables, I could easily just change the tips each time, but just for efficiency, I just start knitting with another set of needles um, that I, uh, I'm using. And I'm using wood for one yarn and metal for another, just because through trial and error, that's what I found out works really well for the two yarns. So there was a time when I would not have had patience for all of that. Um, but now I really want the finished object to look great. And so I'm willing to put in that extra uh, effort to make that happen. So loving this. I'm knitting it as part of the three color cashmere shawl knit along that's running um, on the Grocery Girls podcast. And uh, I think that finishes up what's on my needles right now. Uh, so let's talk about what's off my needles. Finished objects. Um, the most recent finished objects, I just have a couple, one for the top of the body and one for the bottom. Um, these socks are a recent Epo that I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about these. These are also knit in the Patton's Croy yarn. It's the same as the current socks I'm working on. Sorry for the glare. So it's Patton's Croy socks, but in the FX um, colorways. So the difference here is that these do have some striping as well, but there's a little bit of tweedy variegation going on. So you can see that in each color there's a blend of the other colors. And what I've done is a contrasting toe, heel, and cuff in another um, ball of Patton's yarn, but this is just a sort of a semi-solid um, color called flax. This colorway in the body of the sock, in the foot and the leg, is the Cascade Colors colorway. Again, readily available at Michael's. Cost me about um, six bucks a ball. So, pretty inexpensive pair of socks that is very hard wearing. These have already been washed and dried and worn and washed and dried and worn since I made them. Um, so, yeah. Hubby got himself a new pair of hand-knit socks, and he really loves them. He's very appreciative that... Uh, I gave them to him, especially knowing that they were supposed to be for me. It's kind of a bonus for him. As you can see on these, I used my 
most common heel technique, which is uh, a gusset and a slip stitch heel flap. I really like doing that technique because it's repetitive and <clears throat> um, the method of doing it doesn't take a lot of thinking and, uh, and it fits really well. I really like the way they fit when they're done. So that's my first finished object, a pair of socks. The other goes on the opposite end of the body, which is my two color wool hat. This has no specific pattern to it. Um, same with my socks. It's, you know, vanilla sock pattern that I used for these. And it came from guidance from the Wendy Johnson pattern, simple toe up sock pattern with gusset and heel. If you find Wendy Johnson on Ravelry, you'll find that she has a ton of free patterns for different types of socks, knit toe up, knit top down, um, some different heel treatments. So I, I recommend using that. I've been using hers for a long while. This hat is actually just a straight up improvised knit. I thought about having a hat with a really long ribbed brim. I saw a couple um, projects and designs like that on Ravelry and thought, you know, I, I can just go by gauge and cast on a number of stitches that I know would make um, a good fitting brim and then stripe in or add in a second color and do a slouchy top. So it's just some ribbing at the bottom, some knit to pearl to ribbing with um, some increases done after I joined in the new yarn color. And I did enough increases that I think I got to about 120 stitches or so. This is a worsted weight yarn. It's knitting up at about uh, four and a half stitches to the inch or so. This yarn, I'll put it up closer so you can see, is Patton's Valley Bray. It may be, I believe it's discontinued now, but what I love about this yarn is that those little flecks of color. So it's not a very soft yarn, I'm not gonna lie to you. Here's the label. Patton's Bally Bray yarn. Um, it's 100% pure wool with the natural oils still in it. So. If you're really sort of squeezing the yarn and feeling it, you can almost feel that slick feeling of the natural oils. As I said, it's not the softest yarn, but I love it. I've had it for so many years. I've had this probably more than 10 years in my stash. So this was a deep stash finished object. Very satisfying to finish um, projects using yarn that you've had for a long time. You feel like they finally reach their full potential, come out of the deep stash and become something useful. So even though it's not the softest, it has great structure to it. You know, the stitch definition is lovely and I really enjoy all the tweedy flecks in both colors that kind of gives it some more dimension. There's some red and there's some pink, dark brown, light brown mixed in with the cream. I just thought this would be a great easy pattern to cast on and work on and it was. Um, also something that I won't be able to wear in Florida uh, anytime soon, but I do visit cooler places in my travels and I think this is one that has a light enough feel to it that, you know, it's, it's breathable, it's comfortable on um, it's a nice knit, even if I was somewhere and the night was cool, I would put this on. And I like the bit of slouch. Uh, I love the contrasting colors. And this deep brim is a style that I'm pretty happy with. I don't have many hats with such a deep ribbed brim. So what do you guys think? I, I enjoy it. I'm really happy um, with it and how it came out. Uh, this yarn I'll show you is Plenty of it left. Still very prominent in my stash. So I may make another hat like that for my girls, possibly, or as a gift. Um, I might make some matching wrist warmers. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know your ideas on what I could use it for. I even have a third color of it. 
<laughs> when I bought this as a new knitter, I wasn't so concerned at the time about different fiber blends and, you know, I didn't mind that it was scratchy because I, I don't know, I tend to like that. I'm, I'm weird that way. I'm a Jamaican living in Florida who loves wool, even the scratchy kind. <laughs> Um, but when I bought it, I just love the colors. I thought they might go well together. This one I've already used before in another project, and I love the colors in here. There's some purple and blue and green. Um, so it has a lot of dimension, like I said, and I think any one of these combinations would be beautiful together, which is also another reason I bought all of them at one time. Um, and I will make something else with them, either some wrist warmers, um, I might even knit socks out of them or something that I could, you know, wear and use and be warm in. So that's uh, two things off my needles. And both great projects that I'm very happy with how they came out. Pretty simple construction. That appeals to me when I am taking projects with me on the road. I travel for work. I'm in technical sales. <clears throat> so I like projects that I can just pick up, work on, put down, and then uh, move on. So both of those fit that bill. And now, talking about some knit-alongs. So I'm part of a few knit-alongs right now. Uh, first, I'll talk about the ones on Ravelry. Again, I am Brownberry on Ravelry. I have a couple that I've joined that other people are running. I talked about the three-color cashmere shawl knit-along on the Grocery Girls Ravelry group. The Grocery Girls is a podcast with Jody and Tracy that I love. Um, you should check them out here on YouTube. So they have a knit-along going, along, going on on Ravelry. Um, I'm also part of a knit along for a wonderful retreat coming up in June in New Hampshire. It's called the Squam, um, Spring Squam Retreat, uh, the Squam Art Workshops, which I will link to, um, happen every year for the last several years. This will be my first year going and I'm so excited about it. Uh, Elizabeth and Forrest, the, the organizers and the folks who run this retreat are just I mean, I've only talked to them through emails and Ravelry messages, but they just seem like the best people. And I get the great benefit of going to Squam with a friend of mine, Nancy, who is Emerald Lane on Instagram. She has been a few times um, and has loved it. And so we're going together. We're going to be roommates. Um, I get to meet all of these amazing people from around the country. I think there may be even some people coming from other countries. That would be awesome. And um, we'll take classes over the course of a few days. Uh, the area where we'll be at Squam Lake in New Hampshire is gorgeous. I went through so many people's pictures <laughs> who posted um, about Squam, the, the previous events, um, and it's so beautiful. There's a huge lake. I'm told there's hiking and just lots of things to enjoy in the environment. So we'll take classes, we'll have time to explore, we'll have time to sit and knit together, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I am just so excited. <laughs> so on Ravelry, I created a knit-along for the Spring Squam Retreat. It, uh, it is in the Squam Art Workshops group on Ravelry, and I thought it would be great to have some of the people who are coming to Squam make uh, projects from the designers who will be teaching at Squam. So there are four designers that I chose and I made some suggestions about projects for the knit along and created a thread in the Squam group and uh, invited people from Ravelry and Facebook to knit along with me. And my, my wish is that when we get there, uh, those of us who've been part of the knit along will bring our finished objects and take a picture together wearing all the beautiful things we've made. Um, some folks are knitting shawls and I suggested hats, socks, and other things that um, we can work on together. And it's very open and very flexible so folks can choose the suggested patterns or other patterns from the designers. I think it's a great tribute to the folks who will be coming to Squam to teach, uh, to knit from their patterns. So we've already got several people joining in um, it's been such a great way to find out who's coming to Spring Squam, and uh, 
I started that thread in the hopes that other people might want to knit along and it's working. It's going well so far. Um, maybe in another episode, I will show you the project that uh, I'm thinking about making and the yarns that I've chosen. Squam is not until June, as I said, so the knit along runs from March 28th, it started, to, until May 28th. So hoping that folks will have plenty of time to finish their projects and block them and, and bring them with them to the retreat. Another knit along I'm participating in on Ravelry is the Wooly Wormhead um, Wooly Dozen. So I started this knit along in the Wooly Wormhead group. Wooly Wormhead is hands down my favorite hat designer. Um, I'll insert a couple pictures of the Wooly Wormhead hats that I've made right here. So as you can see, so many different styles and yarns and possibilities available by knitting from Wooly Wormhead Designs. And I've been a fan of hers for many years. <clears throat> um, I, I can't even remember how I discovered her on Ravelry, but she has hats made with so many different types of constructions, some knit flat and seamed back and forth, we call the sideways hats, um, some knit in the round. There are color work options, different yarn weights, and so many different finished object um, styles and shapes that I really think she has hats that could suit everyone. But regardless if they're for you or not, they're so fun to knit and they're so interesting and there's always a design element in there that makes the whole thing just that much more enjoyable. So in the Wooly Wormhead Hats group on Ravelry, there is a thread called the Wooly Dozen, and this is a knit along for the year, for 2016, to knit at least 12 Wooly Wormhead hats. So I started with a goal this year to knit one hat per month, every month this year, and I thought everything's better with company. So I invited other folks in the group to do the year-long knit along with me. And um, I think it was Wooly Wormhead who dubbed it the Wooly Dozen, which is just the perfect name. And we've all had such a great time making hats. There are over 140 projects already and we're just going into April. And some folks have also taken up the challenge to knit hats for donation. And these amazing hat knitters are cranking out 10, 20, 30 hats to give away um, to, to folks in need in other places and in other countries. So I love that particular kind of offshoot of the knit along and the benefits that will come from that. And um, it's been great to see the different yarn types and to be able to help and encourage each other, which is what we all love about knit alongs, right? It's the community aspect, crowdsourcing your yarn choices, um, seeing something that you want to make done in another color. Um, and then the pride of a finished object of saying, hey, we had this goal to make this thing together and we did it. So all of that has been happening in the Wooly Dozen Knit Along and I'm loving it. There are folks from Australia and England and Germany and all over the place working towards this goal of finishing the year out with 12 hats for themselves, for gifts, and uh, it's going great so far. And I commend, if any of you are part of that group and you're watching, I commend you. You're doing an amazing job. And I'm having fun with it as well. So that's the second knit along. And the third and last knit along that I'll talk about is actually a much smaller one that's happening right now on Instagram. But consider this my invitation to join in on this knit along. I'm calling it the first fish lips kiss heel socks knit along. Try to say that three times fast. Um, I'll post the hashtag for that knit along and I'll tell you a little bit about it. So I, as I said earlier, I've been wanting to try some different construction, different techniques for knitting socks. And I kept hearing about this fish lips kiss heel pattern, which only costs a dollar on Ravelry. 
And uh, right now it's actually become quite an amazing unintentional fundraiser for the pattern, um, for this uh, pattern designer. Uh, here's a picture of it in a sample project from Ravelry. Actually, I think that's from the pattern page. Um, it's the Fish Lips Kiss Heel Pattern by Sox Therapist, and that's S-O-X Therapist. And everyone who's knit this raves about this construction. Some newbie sock knitters, some veteran sock knitters have said that it's their favorite sock heel construction now. I haven't read all the way through the pattern. I did purchase it as part of the knit along, um, but I'm, I'm very excited to get it started. So I know it just flashed there for a moment, sorry about that, but you can find it on Ravelry. And um, I decided that on recommendation from a couple Instagram friends, hey, Paper Diva, <laughs> uh, and talking through Ravelry messages to a couple of folks who said, yeah, I've been thinking about trying that heel as well. I said, well, let's do it together. What's more fun than trying something new with other people who are trying something new. So um, using that hashtag, feel free to join us right now at Victoria Jean W and at Pettis Kim and I are doing this together. Um, Pettis Kim does the Crafty Nomad podcast, which you must go and see. Kim's laugh is so infectious, so contagious. Um, you have to watch the Crafty Nomad podcast. She's fantastic. So the three of us agreed that we are going to cast on some socks and try this fish lips kiss heel technique. I'll be doing it on these socks that I'm knitting from the top down. I'm getting close. And I think the last I saw on, Ravel, on uh, Instagram, Kim is getting close too. So we've got to get Victoria Jean to cast on as well and try out this pattern. And as I said, it's become an un unintentional fundraiser because the pattern designer um, has some, some medical things going on um, without, you know, talking too much about people's business. The pattern is only a dollar and thousands of knitters have now bought this pattern and it has become a way for the designer to uh, be able to afford some very expensive medical bills. So I am sending her my best, as are many people. And this is a simple way to win-win, you know, support a designer who's come up with something great and try a new technique that you may be able to use in many wonderful projects. So join us if you'd like. If it's your first time knitting this particular heel construction, let's do it together. Let's knit along together. Why not? Hi guys, this is a short segment for Mail Call. Um, it's been a long time since I've looked forward to getting things in the mail. And that's because mostly what I get nowadays is just junk mail and, oh, got a weird, I got a dreadlock trying to escape over there. I'll just tuck that away. So uh, yeah, mostly what we get in the mail now is um, advertisements and junk and promotions and coupons for things that I never buy. So it's been a while since I actually look forward to going to the mailbox, but because I've been ordering some goodies from other makers um, that I found through Instagram and other places, now I look forward to going out to see if there's something great in the mail. So I thought it'd be cool to open up some stuff um, right here on the podcast. And so for me, I haven't seen any of these things yet. This will be a first look, um, and then when you know I share this podcast with you, you guys will get to see what wonderful goodies I received. Um, one of the packages, which I'll start with, is one that I wasn't expecting. So, and it's from a colleague of mine, and it's not something that I ordered or anything. So I'm looking to see what it is. Here, the, here's the package um, that came to me, and it's flat. Let's see what it is. I haven't said, I don't know what this is, so. Okay, wow. Look at that. So there's a note on it. It says, enjoy, reminded me of your creative doodles. And it's with it's from someone that I've worked with for a long time, um, who I, I think on a trip that we took, a work trip we took, I was probably working in my sketchbook. 
And so he's given me this Relax, Color, and Create Color Me book. How awesome is this? And it's small. It's something I could easily travel with. Let's see what's in here. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, a lot of these coloring books have been showing up in bookstores and other places, and I received a few of them for my birthday. Um, this is a great size that I can, like, tuck into my purse with a couple of pens or markers. I have some great Sakura brand watercolor markers uh, that I can use. Oh, I love this. I love repeating patterns. And oftentimes I'll look in a book like this and get inspiration for my own drawing. Isn't that great? People are so thoughtful. Man, this is awesome. I love this. There's plenty for me to do in here. Um, this looks like the cover picture, and I might start with this. This peacock here. Yeah, uh, lots and lots and lots of time can be spent um, working through these designs, which is what I love about it. I've only recently started drawing and painting and, and working in books like this, but I find it so meditative. Do any of you guys out there draw or color or paint? Is it recent for you like it is for me? Or have you been doing it forever? I would love to know. Um, it's a new, wonderful experience for me and I've met um, so many people online through just that particular creative expression. I love it. This is great. I'm, I'm so lucky. I feel like I'm such a lucky person. This is awesome. I have to send a very nice thank you. Um, the other two packages are things that I was expecting. One that I uh, wasn't expecting to get, but I knew it was coming because I found out that I had won a drawing. This is a first for me. There are wonderfully generous people out there who spin yarn, dye yarn, sew bags, um, and create. And sometimes they do giveaways. I'm sure you guys have seen this on Instagram and other places. Well, Sarah of Baby Long Legs, um, an indie yarn dyer and um, spinner, who is Baby Long Legs on Etsy, had a drawing on her blog. She had written a, an amazing post. Her blog is great, I'll, I'll link to it. And she asked for folks to comment if they wanted, sorry, if they wanted a chance to win some of her hand spun. And I would have commented anyway because I, the post was wonderful but I loved having an opportunity to win some of her yarn. But whenever I do things like that, I just kind of set it and forget it. Commented and didn't think about it again. Well, someone in a group that we're both in on Ravelry, the Wooly Worm Heads Hat Knitters Group, we're knitting a dozen hats this year at minimum. Um, someone in that Wooly Dozen Knit Along group kind of nudged and said, Sarah, we want to know who won the drawing for the yarn. And it was me. I was thrilled. I kind of sat staring at the screen like, that's my username. I won. <laughs> it was wonderful. So it's here. When I saw her name on the package today and her logo, I'll show it to you here. I'll just uh, cover up the address just in case, but I mean, you guys should order from her. <laughs> anyway, um, Baby Long Legs on Etsy. I got so excited. I mean, this is all the way from the UK, which is cool in and of itself to receive international mail. But this just takes the cake. Look at this cute sticker. That's so awesome. It's on the package. And inside the package are two skeins. Oh my goodness. You, this is like live for me. I'm seeing this for the first time. <gasps> Look at that. Look at this gorgeous hand spun. This is, uh, the post that she wrote was called Looking Forward, very inspirational. I encourage you to go back. It's a beautiful card. It's her spinning and fiber. <sighs> that post about looking forward, I just found it so uplifting um, and so genuine. I just commend people who can be very open and, and kind of externally processed sometimes. Um, and this is just a bonus. So 
I will link the details to this yarn. Um, I don't want to say the name of it wrong at the moment, and because I'm just doing this kind of spur of the moment, I didn't make notes, but I'll make sure there's notes about this yarn. She's so talented, Sarah. There's so many options out there on her Etsy shop. I'm really excited to use this. I, uh, I have to come up with something really good for these yarns because I love the colors. I mean, red is one of my favorite colors of all time anyway. So I will be very motivated to find a good use for this. Um, I may use them together. I may use them as accents in another project. We'll see. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sarah of Baby Long Legs. Um, I believe on Ravelry, she's Mama Long Legs. And uh, I'll make sure you have all her information. But these mini skeins, ah, and the note, so beautiful. I'm going to have lots of fun with them. I love them. I'll tuck this note away for a little bit later. Love it. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the Brownberry Chronicles podcast. Find me online at Hey Brownberry on Instagram and Twitter. I'm also on Periscope at Hey Brownberry, and I'm on Ravelry as Brownberry. Feel free to friend me there, um, follow me on Instagram or Periscope or Twitter, and uh, connect with me anytime. Comment on this video. If you like, I try to get back to everyone who reaches out and subscribe if you'd like to know when I have new videos coming out. I hope you've had an amazing week and that your good days continue and that you find joy in making. And I hope you'll join me next time. Thanks for being here. Bye.